there's a, there's a section in the piece toward the very end where the woman paints herself and, and uh, paints her body or prepares herself for the ritual. And um, I knew from day one that that's, that must take place. So that was a matter of experimentation with different kinds of body paint uh, and how we could effectively uh, get the paint on the stage and uh, but came from many ideas at one point we were going to have a large disc lower into the center of the stage and pour over her body and we were coming up with all these crazy ideas and it, it was a simple matter of just having someone come out in a cup and with a cup and put put the paint in the middle of the floor which no one ever saw so all of a sudden the paint was there or the 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 uh, first image of her covering her body Everybody asks, what does that mean? You know, um, the image of white paint being placed on, on the body was a very, something that I found in most of the research of, of, of primitive African tribes and, and uh, a lot of the Balinese, uh, Aztec, Inca. I was sitting in this restaurant and, um, at a friend of mine's and they have a, a paper and you can, the crayons and you can sort of draw and every day I go in there and, and, and have lunch there and start getting ideas about Rite of Spring. And so most of my ideas are on pieces of, uh, pieces of paper from the restaurant. Uh, the end of Rite of Spring is very important because um, it's about a sacrifice. It's about a, a woman who is giving her life. And I've, I had this, this I, I, well, I've been wondering, you know, should she fall in a volcano or should she be burned at the stake or what, what happens to this person at the end? And, came up with the idea of, uh, of almost impaling the woman. So to translate that into artistic terms, into dance terms, has been, been this ongoing question. And we have these poles that, um, and, and using some primitive ideas, we, we looked at uh, almost a teepee shape. So we created these poles, and we started working with them to see if we could build a structure that ever works, that someone could at the top of this be lifted in, into by the dancers. So perhaps if the dancers came from below and someone bent backwards and then were just hoisted up to this, well, this is a low level. It would probably go about four feet higher. Uh, and then to support someone in a position there, and then the whole group that are supporting her would just fall down and collapse and this person would be left at the top of this. This is one of those kinds of mad dreams that we have and then hopefully choreographically in reality we can bring it to to some kind of semblance of that dream. Four, five, six, da 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 one, like a yawn. The idea of the paint and the idea of the tripod were all, all about experiencing in a very, very strong way other than dance terms, a death. And so it evolved from that standpoint. Uh, kind of like a, a, um, the woman dances in a frenzy or becomes uh, uh, in a hypnotic state. One, two, three, four, let it move. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Well, sometimes when the music is really very strong, you cannot, as a group or anyone, go bigger than that. And I tried to match it at times, and, and it was very difficult to do. So I, un I began to understate the choreography to let the music take the forefront at certain points in the ballet. In that work in progress, there were probably four sections that were done at least three times each because they weren't working well or they were I was going too close to the music and, and trying to be as dominant as, as Stravinsky's and um, it became uh, I realized later that the best thing to do was to go in opposition to that so there were se several changes uh, other parts were very clear in my mind what I wanted and it was a very easy task seven, eight. one three four five six seven eight <gasps> will we ever get that <laughs> will we ever get that together yes we will yeah 
It's a matter of doing it over and over. Once I get to a certain point, then I think the artists are open to interpretation of, of uh, to taking, take the role to another level, for example. But from its inception, I think it was all very me. <laughs> it was all very, of course I take the blame for it too, you know. But uh, I had this vision in my mind and it seemed to be very, very clear. And at times I wasn't very clear about uh, getting the message out to the dancers. And therefore I had to make changes, but, but pretty much it was all me. Once the, all the steps are learned and once all the movement is in place and we start doing run-throughs, then they begin to um, do their own thing in a sense or, or bring their individuality to the role. Uh, and of course that's within limitations, but um, there is a certain freedom in which to do that. It's extremely personal. It's extremely personal. Um, it's based on, I guess, all that we learn from society and everything. And, and the more experimentation I did movement-wise and the more research I did, because I started getting into books of rituals and rites of passage for primitive societies, and, and, and um, the more I realized how of today this ballet is, of, of the way we, our society works from a political standpoint, from a dividing of, of political parties to choosing a, a figure and in an essence sacrificing that figure. Um, it's, it's, uh, so it was very close to me and, and, and very, very personal. I think the message is what everyone feels inside when they see it. It's hard to talk about dance. I mean, if we could talk about dance, we wouldn't really need to dance, you know? So uh, everyone is going to, you know, you read a book and everyone finds their own message in that book, and this is the same with, with, with our art form.